This isn't about a flashy gadget or the next smartphone. It's about something deeper, something that's powered our world quietly for over a century. Electric motors are everywhere, built on the same idea, tightly wound coils of copper or aluminum generating motion. But what if that foundation is now outdated? A team of researchers has created a motor with no metal coils at all, only carbon. It's lighter, more flexible, and surprisingly powerful. This isn't just an upgrade, it's a reimagination. And yet, almost no one is paying attention. Could this change everything? Let's find out. Why coils matter? To understand why this matters, we need to understand what coils do. Inside almost every electric motor, whether it's spinning a hard drive or powering an entire vehicle, there's a carefully wound bundle of metal wire. These coils carry electric current and create magnetic fields. That invisible force is what makes the motor turn. Simple as that. Copper has always been the material of choice. It's highly conductive, meaning electrons can flow through it with ease. It's durable, predictable, and well understood. Aluminum is sometimes used too, especially when weight matters more than perfect efficiency. But both metals come with trade-offs. They're heavy, they're costly, and in machines where every gram counts, like drones, electric planes, or even next-gen wearables, those trade-offs start to feel like dead weight. And that's the thing. The coil isn't just a part. It's the heart of the motor. And for over a hundred years, we've accepted the limitations that come with using metal to build it. But what if we didn't have to? What if the coil could be something else entirely? Carbon enters the scene. That something else is carbon. Not in the form of graphite or soot, but as something far more advanced, carbon nanotubes. These are cylindrical molecules made of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal pattern, like rolled up sheets of graphene. They're thinner than a strand of DNA and stronger than steel. And when arranged precisely, they can carry electricity almost as well as copper. Researchers in South Korea weren't just playing with a new material, they were solving a fundamental problem. Instead of refining the same old metals, they started with a different idea. Build the coil from carbon from the ground up. They developed a method to align these microscopic tubes into organized structures, forming a kind of cable that could flex, bend, and still conduct power. This wasn't just a lab trick. The result was a fully functional wire made entirely of carbon. Lightweight, durable, and astonishingly efficient. Suddenly, something that sounded like science fiction became a working prototype. A coil with no metal, no weight penalty, and no rigid form. It could twist, it could stretch, and most importantly, it could power a motor. Not theoretically, in practice. Quietly, carbon had entered the game. How the innovation works. It all starts with alignment. Carbon nanotubes, for all their potential, don't do much if they're scattered randomly. What the Korean research team did differently was create a way to organize these tubes with microscopic precision. Their method is called lyotropic liquid crystal-assisted surface texturing, a mouthful. But at its core, it's about control. They suspended the carbon nanotubes in a special liquid crystal solution, then carefully guided them into straight, densely packed formations. The result is what they call a core sheath composite electric cable, or CSCEC. Think of it like a high-tech rope. The inner core is tightly packed carbon nanotubes aligned for maximum conductivity, while the outer sheath adds structure, flexibility, and protection. This design allows the cable to move and flex without compromising performance, something copper could never dream of. Once they had a wire, the next challenge was building a motor around it. And here's where things got wild. Traditional motors depend on fixed shapes and rigid frames, but with carbon wiring, those constraints disappear. The team constructed prototype motors where the coils weren't bound to a solid structure. They could be woven into fabrics, wrapped around curved surfaces, embedded into flexible frames. Electricity flowed through the carbon paths just like it would through copper, though with one crucial difference. The overall weight of the coil was reduced by over 8 or 
That's not a marginal improvement. That's revolutionary. It means motors that are lighter, more compact, and less power-hungry. In tests, these new designs performed comparably to traditional copper-based motors in terms of function, while offering entirely new possibilities in form. Even more intriguing, the carbon coils showed resilience in unusual conditions, bending, compressing, and stretching while still maintaining conductivity. Imagine a motor that could flex like a muscle or curl like a ribbon, yet still spin with precision. That's scission. What this could change? The impact of this isn't limited to lab experiments. If carbon-based motors prove viable at scale, they could reshape entire industries. Start with aerospace. Every kilogram matters when you're trying to lift something into the sky. Replacing heavy copper coils with feather-light carbon alternatives could mean lighter aircraft, longer flight times, and more efficient fuel use. It's not just about electric planes, either. Satellites, drones, even deep space rovers could all benefit from shedding weight without sacrificing function. In the automotive world, electric vehicles carry a surprising amount of copper, hundreds of kilograms, hidden in motors, wires, and systems. Swapping even part of that for carbon wouldn't just make the car lighter. It would improve acceleration, extend battery life, and lower manufacturing costs over time. Then there's wearables and medical tech. Traditional motors are too bulky, too rigid, too hot. But what if the motor could move with your body? These carbon coils could be woven into smart fabrics, enabling clothing that senses movement or adjusts its shape. They could power tiny implants or flexible exoskeletons built not from hard shells but soft, adaptable materials. Robotics, too, enters a new frontier. Today's machines are stiff, segmented, and mechanical. Tomorrow's robots, powered by soft, flexible motors, might twist, stretch, and flow more like living creatures than machines. The barrier between biology and engineering things when your motor can bend like a tendon. Even the infrastructure could be affected. Lighter wiring that performs reliably in extreme conditions, underwater, in tight spaces, or inside flexible systems could change how we think about grids and power delivery. This isn't about making better versions of old machines. It's about enabling designs we couldn't build before. Designs we hadn't even imagined. Carbon doesn't just replace copper. It opens a new chapter. Challenges and concerns. But no breakthrough comes without problems. And this one is no exception. The first hurdle is production. Making carbon nanotubes is still difficult and expensive. Aligning them correctly using liquid crystal processes requires precision tools, controlled environments, and time. It's not something that can be cheaply mass-produced in a factory line. At least, not yet. Even though the raw material, carbon, is abundant, the methods used to refine it into high-performance cables are still far from affordable. Right now, a single meter of this carbon wiring costs significantly more than copper. For large-scale use in vehicles or power systems, that price must drop dramatically. There's also the issue of conductivity. While carbon nanotube wires are impressive, they still don't quite match copper in raw electrical performance. They're close, and in certain formats, they even exceed it when factoring in weight. But a full replacement isn't ready today. Durability raises more red flags. These cables are sensitive to moisture, oxidation, and heat. Without proper sealing or treatment, they can degrade over time, especially under high voltage or in exposed environments. And then there's the unknown. We don't yet fully understand the long-term effects of widespread carbon nanomaterial use. How do these particles behave when discarded? Could they pose environmental or health risks if released into the air or water? Right now, science is ahead of the regulation, which means, for all its promise, this technology still lives in a space of caution as much as excitement. The future rewired. Yet that space between caution and excitement, that's where the future often begins. Think back to the early days of lithium-ion batteries, they were unstable, expensive, and doubted by many. But slowly, with refinement and mass production, they went from niche tech to the heart of smartphones, laptops, 
and electric cars. Carbon-based coils could follow the same path. Quiet now, essential later. What makes this different isn't just the material, it's what the material allows. Flexibility, lightness, adaptability, motors that aren't fixed in shape or form, wiring that wraps instead of roots, machines that respond to the body instead of resisting it. Once manufacturing catches up, and it will, these motors could start appearing where we least expect, in soft medical devices, foldable drones, ultralight e-bikes, even clothing that moves and responds on its own. We're not replacing copper because it's bad. We're rethinking motion itself. The geometry, the structure, the feel of machines. What's coming isn't just smaller or faster. It's stranger, more organic, built less like a box and more like a limb. And that future, woven from carbon, may already be here, just quietly waiting to be noticed. This might be the first time you're hearing about carbon-powered motors, but that's how big shifts often begin. Quietly. In labs, not headlines. But they don't stay quiet forever. Next time a motor spins, think about what's inside. Today, it's copper. Tomorrow, maybe not. If this sparked your curiosity, hit like, subscribe, and stick around for more stories of the tech that's quietly changing everything. And let us know in the comments, could you trust a motor with no metal? Or does copper still rule?